All right, so now let's talk about public servants and these people that think that they have a higher claim on your energy. Public servants serve the private sovereign who, having founded a constitutional unincorporated government for the benefit of the people, are governed by their consent. That sounds like something out of the Declaration of Independence. Your government is a public institution with public servant employees who serve in a public capacity, whereas the people who form governments are private people living in their private capacity. Okay, that makes sense. Public is public, private is private. Public servants serve the private people who, having instituted a freely elected representative government for the benefit of the people, are governed by their consent. Are governed by their consent. All elected officials and or employees of the public state are public servants, including peace officers. Now, that's something else we'll get into in another video, is the difference between a peace officer and a law enforcement officer, a LEO. The founding of a representative government by the people automatically forms a trust in common law with the people as beneficiaries and their public servants are the trustees. The public servants have a fiduciary duty to serve the beneficiaries of the trust. Who's the beneficiary? You are. We are. We the people. Not them. They're supposed to delegate and trustee. It is the responsibility of the private people to oversee their trust and their public servant employees for the common good of their communities and their nation. I think that nation should be capitalized. The government of a sovereign nation is an unincorporated body politic, which enabled by the delegated power of the people can create subordinate legal fiction governmental corporations and non-governmental corporations for the purpose of commerce. Sovereign living people are in the common law jurisdiction the national law, the law of the land, lawful law, while legally generated corporate artificial persons created by the state are in admiralty, maritime, commercial jurisdiction, the international law of the sea, which is legal. So you have, again, legal and lawful. There is a difference. The common law mirrors natural law in as much as the protection of life is paramount because life is a sacred creation. Natural law is a system of right or justice held to be common to all humans and derived from nature rather than from the rules of society. I think we talked about that. Whereas the legal fiction system of commerce is simply an imaginary construct using artificial persons as transmitting utilities to extract and exchange productive energy from the real world, which is you and I, hence the maxim of law, legality is not reality. Jurisdiction is critical because when a man or woman acts in the role of an artificial person, they are subservient to the state which created it by registration. Okay, register your car, get a marriage registration, get a birth registration, get your license to fish, get your registration for a firearm, get all your privileges and stuff. Your artificial person has to get them from the state. You don't need any of that. The state prescribes revocable privileges and benefits to its persons, whereas private men and women possess unalienable rights and properties. 
Artificial persons and all corporations are created as debtors by default, having no creative human energy or innate productive capacity, and therefore they can be bankrupted. This is why your government has been incorporated and why you are using debt money instead of sovereign money like gold and silver, issued debt-free by a sovereign unincorporated government. When a nation or community surrenders its sovereign power to create money without debt or interest, a deadly economy is inevitable due to the cumulative toxic consequences of interest-bearing debt, which is the Federal Reserve Bank. Finally, the system is mathematically guaranteed to collapse because the interest, which is not created, compounds exponentially, requiring ever more new debt to service existing debt. Debt cannot pay a debt. That's why you cannot use Federal Reserve debt notes to pay a debt. Every time you swipe your credit card, it creates more debt. Every time you write a check, it creates more debt. Every time you pay a bill with a debt note, it creates more debt. Let me ask you guys something, man. And uh, sorry, it's too big for the screen. But there's another two in front of that two. Okay? U.S. national debt. Federal spending. U.S. federal budget deficit. Deficit. There's debt per citizen. If you're a U.S. citizen, that's yours. Debt per taxpayer. It's, even, it's twice as, three times as much. Let me ask these guys something. How are you going to stop those numbers? Huh? How are you going to stop this number right here? This U.S. total debt. $73 trillion. How, how are you... I mean, look at these numbers. I mean, just look at this thing for a minute. Look, they even have another one. Look at this. This is the U.S. debt clock. This is USA. We're 22 trillion in the hole. Look at this. China's 9 trillion in the hole. That is so, so far off. So hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. Yeah, okay. Japan's 12 in the hole. Who else is looking good? Argentina. Da, da, da. So I don't know how they know this. Spain's a trillion in the hole. But here's, here's the other thing that I wanted to just say real quick. How are you going to stop these numbers? The answer is you can't. Servicing debt requires extracting production at any cost beyond the limits to growth on our finite plan. The growth imperative to service endless debt causes overall a destructive economy. Given the parasitic na nature of debtism, it should be obvious why the private people are not taught to uphold their living common law jurisdiction, which acknowledges their sovereign rights already existing and antecedent to the state. The sovereign people of any nation have a duty to oversee their governmental public servants failing which the sovereign people, despite their inherent authority, will sooner or later suffer the consequences of their negligence. Because history teaches us that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. When private people wish to exercise their sovereign authority over the public, unincorporated and incorporated, they must have common law standing. Every man and woman and every community of private people can uphold the common law, declining consent if they deem it necessary to avoid harm and loss to any living soul, or to safeguard their community, or to protect their living earth upon which all people depend on for life. A private man or woman can rebut a presentment from a public servant and hold them to account. 
by using a process of conditional acceptance. Or our community of private people can rebut a decision, a plan, or a policy of their public servants by holding a people's assembly in order to exercise their home rule powers. Okay? So conditional acceptance, that is the first thing you do when you get a notice in the mail. You conditionally accept upon proof of claim. And that's where the administrative process comes from and is for.